Well, this is what we see at the beginning of the third week of development. And the structures that should concern us at this point have been zoomed in. You can see the extra embryonic mesoderm, the amnion and the epiblast, the umbilical vesicle and the hypoblast, and the epiblast and hypoblast together constitute the bilaminar germ disc. Fast forward to the end of the third week and the bilaminar germ disc will have uh, turned into a trilaminar germ disc by a process known as gastrulation. It all starts with the primitive streak, but first we'd have to slice the embryo, or what we've got of the embryo, through a section like this. And if we were to look down at this, from that point of view, we would see the dorsal surface of the disc of the epiblast, and it would look something like this. But at the beginning of gastrulation, something happens. A bunch of cells at about this point grow in the median plane. And by grow, I mean they proliferate a lot. And they develop a sort of knot at the end. This structure is known as the primitive streak. And this knot of cells at the end is known as the primitive node. So this is the P node. And this is the P streak, the primitive streak. Well, now that the primitive streak has been um, established, we now know that this side is the caudal end of the embryo, the caudal or the tail end of the embryo. And this side is the cranial or the head end of the embryo. We also know where the median plane of the embryo lies. It goes right through the primitive streak. And we also know that this is the dorsal, or the posterior surface, of the embryo. But what happens next in gastrulation is that this proliferation of cells, okay, develops an invagination. Which means that the cells, basically, they go downwards in the middle. And that's denoted by this darker shade of blue going through the middle of the streak and the node. Well, it's kind of hard to see here, so I'm going to draw for you what it would look like if you were to look at it sideways from, from this point of view, and if you were to look at this and this. You would see something like this. This would be the node, this would be the streak. And while well, cells would be going down here, they would be invaginating. And that would create a depression. This is the node once again, this is the streak, this is the pit, and this is the groove. Primitive groove, that is, and primitive pit, primitive streak, and primitive node. But what happens next in gastrulation? Well, this is the rest of the epiblast disc, and what happens is that the cells of the streak now sink even deeper. They go down. And we know what's down there. Down there, we have got the hypoblast. Remember? The hypoblast. Well, what happens once the cells sink down? Well, to see that more clearly, we'd have to make a transverse section through about that point. And what we would see is something that would look like this. This would be the epiblast. This would be the groove or the streak or the node or the pit. And this would be the epiblast as well. And remember, all of this is occurring in the median plane. The cells would be going down, right? And this would be the hypoblast. Well, what these blue cells would do is that they would, they would push these yellow cells to the side. So this bunch of cells would be displaced this way, and this bunch of cells would be displaced that way. And the blue cells would come and settle in their space. These cells that replace the hypoblast are known as endoderm cells, and they are, in fact, denoted by the color yellow. Okay? So I'm just going to draw in these cells in the color yellow. Right? These are endoderm cells. Endoderm cells. Well, cells from the primitive streak haven't started migrating downwards yet. 
they're still migrating downward. This time, they, the cells that are migrating settle in between the endoderm and the epiblast. This, this layer is known as the mesodermal layer. It is the most prolific layer. It gives rise to a lot of things in the body. And the thing with this layer is that um, it goes on, it goes on, it spills out of the sides of the embryonic disc, okay? And to connect with the extra embryonic mesoderm, if you would re recollect, which lies right about there. A couple of things to note about the mesoderm would be that um, it's kind of divided into three. There's the paraxial mesoderm, there is the intermediate mesoderm, and there is the lateral plate mesoderm, and they all give rise to different things. And same thing on the other side. And as we said, it spills out of the um, out over the edge of the embryonic disc. So that would look something like this, right? It's coming out. It's coming from the primitive streak, and it's coming all the way out of the edge to meet with the extra embryonic mesoderm, right? Another thing to note about the mesoderm would be that it does not actually cover all the space in between the epiblast and the endoderm. There are two points specifically, one over here and one over here. This is known as the cloaca. It gives rise to the anus in the adult human being. This is the oropharynx formerly known as the precordal plate. And at, this, at these two places, it looks something like this. There's epiblast, and there is endoderm, okay? And that's it. These have um, important... This, uh, this persistence of the bilamina structure at these two points has implications in the anatomy of the mouth, as we said, and the anus in the adult human being. There's also a bit of mesoderm here, okay, known as the cardiogenic mesoderm, and this gives rise to the heart. What about the primitive streak? What happens to it after the mesodermal layer has been well completed? Remember, we said the mesodermal layer is the most prolific layer, and it's the one that, that will keep getting built all the way until the end of the third week. Well, the primitive streak is very much a temporary structure. It has to degenerate at some point, and it goes caudally and does degenerate, so supposing the primitive node is to here, there, right now, when it degenerates, it ends up somewhere much closer to the caudal end of the embryo, and I'm just going to erase the primitive node to illustrate that it has pretty much um, degenerated. And, yep, if it doesn't degenerate, it gives rise to something known as sacro- Digital teratomas. These are tumors containing pluripotential cells, um, which basically just means cells that give rise to literally any human tissue. Because remember, all three layers of the um, trilamina germ disc, right, gave rise or arose from the primitive streak, right? So it only makes sense that if there's a tumor of the cells of the primitive streak, they would contain literally any cell, endo, meso, or recto. And by the way, the cells that remain in the epiblast and do not migrate downwards to give you either the endoderm or the mesoderm become known as the ectoderm cells, and they give rise to the central nervous system, as well as um, the epidermis of the skin. And now we can see that we've got our three germ layers and all of them come
from the the primitive streak or the upper block, even the endoderm.